All right, so we are jumping into the middle of the Ranger project, I guess, already. You know, I've got a lot of stuff all over the place right now. Everything's all torn apart. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah we'll, we'll get into that in a second. All right, so basically, build overview. I'm sure you'll have seen in the thumbnail all the parts set out for everything uh there's a couple things missing like the 4l80 i'm not doing a video on that um get into that in a second I'm not doing a video on the 4l80 that came out of a parts truck that i had for a little bit uh bought that guy for 500 bucks you know a couple hours away brought it back pulled the 60 and 4l80 because it was a 2000 2500 so it was an iron head six liter i didn't really want the six liter i've already got the five three uh i didn't really want one of them if i was going to get a six oh i'm going to get a gen four six oh eventually maybe if i upgrade so aj got that motor out of there i pretty much got the trans it was pretty much the only reason i got it uh scrap the cats scrap the truck I uh, got 150 bucks for both of the cats. Scrap, I got 175, I think. So already right off there, I've made back 325 bucks, which isn't bad. Um, turns out the truck came with an MP246 transfer case, which if you know anything about the four-wheel drive GM stuff, the 246 is kind of a junky auto track thing. It's got a bunch of clutches in it. It'll burn out. It never fully disengages the front drive shaft. Wasn't what I wanted for what my build. It's electronic. I have to worry about a TCM module and a switch and getting everything to work right and reprogramming junk. I didn't want to worry about that. And I wanted something more heavier duty than the uh, the 200 or the the 240 series transfer cases a, a 241 and 243 or a 246 so i sold the 246 facebook marketplace 100 bucks and then i found an mp261 on marketplace for 50 bucks so i grabbed that so that is a fully manual transfer case that i'll be putting in this thing you know nice easy i'll be able to hook it up to the ranger four-wheel drive shifter you know, the transfer case shifter next to where the stick shift is right now, where it will no longer be stick shift uh, since we're going auto. But, all right, so we'll get into all of the parts and everything. Don't mind the rockers here. Basically, for the Trans 480, did an HD2 shift kit. Um, I'll talk about that more in a minute. But, so this is where we start getting into all the goodies. Here, inside of here, is a heavy-duty rated radiator for a Ranger Bronco 2 and Explorer. But, yeah, so that's a nice radiator. It's got a 2-inch and 1-quarter core, so it's a lot bigger than mine, which is only about 1-inch as it is. Moving on... I guess we'll start from this box at the top. My China headers, I had them taped off for when I was pressure washing the motor. Whatever, these are stainless steel, the China up and forward style, turbo headers, nice V band, three inch collector. They're decent headers for what I paid for them, 80 bucks. I already seen these when I had them mounted up on there. Uh, next thing, we'll move on to, we got. Wastegate spring, so I've got like a four pound and a six pound around here places. This should probably go down in that box with the wastegate. Oh, and intercooler, I believe, is a 31 by 12 by 3 eBay 3 inch. That was about 70 bucks. This baby right here, the cam, which is kind of one of the, the big parts for this or at least for me I'll open it up real quick yep cam very nice right the cam is just a sloppy stage 2 elgin 
So it's a Elgin E1840P, otherwise known as the Slappy Stage 2 cam. But good cam. Looking forward to using that. She let me make some nice power. It sounds good. Chops nice. Got a piece of intake. This is four inch aluminum. That'll go between the turbo and the air filter. Uh, eBay downpipe for like a Cummins, but it's four inch. So I got that. Uh, exhaust tubing four inch in here as well. This is four inch stainless. I got two four foot sections, which should let me do most of the exhaust. Four inch flex pipe going between the down pipe and the rest of the exhaust. You need at least one flex pipe on it. AEM wideband, Yugo wideband gauge. Comes with everything you need for it. I got some stainless MIG wire. You know, uh, normal stuff so I can do some MIG on some stainless steel in here. This is an eBay intercooler piping kit. I got my filter. I've got a couple extra couplers, like some four and a quarter to four inch pieces for going out between the throttle body and other stuff. I got little adapters and stuff in there to make that stuff work. Uh, mufflers. I'm putting mufflers on this thing because I want to daily drive it. I want it to be nice. So we got two Flowmaster FX pass-through perforated core mufflers you know these are a good deal they're only like 40 bucks a piece they're three inch in three inch out because for the exhaust i'm doing a full four inch split into two three inch for the tailpipes so that's why i'm doing this i'm gonna put the mufflers as far back in the exhaust as i can get it and they should do the best job that they can muffling from all the way back there um other stuff got some header wrap and some heat tape is in there a bunch of v-band flanges the turbo i think i already went over what's in there oh, um the my boost controller is in there i got a dual stage boost controller which will work nice and here i'll take this guy out since this is a nice piece I'll just look at it real quick right there you know my hand for reference you know this is a big guy it's a 50 millimeter and move saw wastegate so it comes with the flange and everything to weld on whatever normal stuff people use these a lot they're pretty good i already took this one apart inspected it make sure there's no uh burrs or anything in there um yeah so this is the one wastegate spring the other ones around here yeah it's down in the back there down in the back uh some tubing i had laying around i made sure i set this aside so i can use it for this for the wastegate and i have this electric cutout this is a uh, doug's headers three and a half inch electric cutout stainless steel you know, for the deal that I got this on, it was worth it to get one of these. It's a nice gate-style valve. You don't have to worry about these leaking, rattling on startup. So, that's that. I um, think that's it for the parts, at least for now. I've got more stuff in the mail. Like exhaust tubing, all my 3-inch. Uh, there's some cam bearings. There's some transmission clutch plates because I broke some stuff. So I guess we'll get into the trans next. This is 4L80E out of, uh, out of the 2500. So this pretty much, I was only going to do the HD2 kit and only do the valve body section. But I took it apart. There was metal shavings in the pan, a lot of clutch material. So I took the thing apart. All the way, I took everything out of the inside, chuck it over. It turned out that it came off of the park. Somebody was being mean to it and made some metal shavings, which wasn't good to have in there. But it's all cleaned out now. We're all nice in there, all good, put back together. Almost all put back together. You can see in there, we're missing some stuff. Uh, this is the overdrive clutch pack. So 
You actually see here what I did. I've been messing with this and I bent it up. It wasn't this bad at first, but you'll be able to see here. Come on, focus, 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 you piece of junk. Come on, focus. All right, you can see there how all of these fingers are all bent down. Well, I didn't actually get it all together all the way, and then I cranked down all of the pump bolts, and that last plate on there in the bottom, it kind of ruined it. So I got a whole new set of those on here. Those should be here by Wednesday, so I'll be tossing that thing back together real quick. I'm not going to bother doing the video on any of the transmission stuff because, honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just following the instructions, and... There are other people that have done a better job explaining what exactly you're doing to this thing. And I don't want to say something wrong to somebody and I screwed up. Whatever. I'm not doing a video on this. I don't really want to. It's complicated. Goofy stuff. Lots of springs, drilling holes, and yeah. So if you want to go watch... A very good video on how to do the HD2 kit, including the installation of the intermediate snap ring and the pump modifications. Because I got my pump over here. I did the drilling, the extra feed hole in the pump, as well as the, uh, I think it's the pressure exhaust off the pump since you're constantly feeding it. I drilled, I did the drilling in the pump, which is a good thing to do. You prevent seal blowouts, whatever. I did that stuff. If you want to watch a good video on how to do all of this stuff and do the entire transmission, all of the valve body stuff, go watch uh, A21 Bravo. He's got a real good video on how to do this. It's long, but he goes through pretty much everything, including tearing down like the, the planetary sets and the different pistons inside the drums that do different stuff. I didn't even do any of that, so go watch that. You know, I did. Basically, I put the springs in that this thing said. I drilled the holes so that this thing should shift significantly firmer than the stock transmission, but not be ridiculous. So it'll be nice, crisp, snappy shifts. You know, not sloppy auto like a 4L60. So should be nice, you know, it was big pain in the butt, I I hate transmission now, but that's all done. Okay, here we go, so I got some BTR valve seals right here, these nice guys, brand new, the ones in this thing, I'm glad I got those, because the ones in this thing are shot, they are no good, so I got my tool, I made my little valve spring compressor tool, bolts into the rocker arm, carriage whatever assembly got that going pretty easy stuff i mean uh head gaskets we we're using those so you know i'll probably clean off the heads just a little bit break clean wipe down scrape them a little bit all fine and dandy clean off those head gaskets toss them back in you know maybe wipe down this guy here and then since i have it apart anyways I'm going to be gapping the piston rings, too. So, you know, it's just cheap insurance in case anything happens. They, I don't run the risk of butting ring ends because that's no fun for anybody. So I'm going to be doing that. Other disappointing part about this motor is that these are Gen 3 rods and pistons. I thought... This was Gen 4 because of some of the outside features on this motor. But it turns out it is Gen 3, even though it is an 04, 1500, 5.3, which is kind of doo-doo. I'll be limited to about 1600, but... Or I'll be limited to about 600 horsepower at the wheels, which is more than enough than I probably need, honestly. But we'll, yeah, we'll see how she goes. Gap the rings, cheap insurance, take care of that. Yes. Uh, yeah, transmission everywhere, waiting on parts. Other than that, I have pretty much everything ordered to do this entire project and get the swap in and running. 
So I think I got to order like fluids. I got to go to the junkyard, get a couple connectors and miscellaneous stuff that's going to be difficult or expensive to just buy online. And then I'm pretty much ready to go at this point. So yeah, we're getting close. Couple weeks here and this thing will be up and that truck will be up and running probably LS swapped. So we're looking good on the time. I'm getting a lot of work done fast. It's a lot of work every night. I think I might uh I may uh do a little time lapse here or some stuff working on it. So yep, gotta finish up the valve springs here and I think the next step is gapping piston rings. So, yeah, that should be fun. So, we'll get to it. Okay, another quick clip here. So, I was getting ready to gap the rings. So, I got this is piston number two. Piston number two on the what would be the passenger side. I checked both the rings, and this motor supposedly has like 270,000 miles on it. So, um, the top ring measured about 25.5 and 28 thou so that's like already to what you would run for boost gap wise so this motor is pre-gapped mint i don't have to do anything else so i'm gonna check probably one on the other side i'll probably check number seven and i'll probably check number eight but as long as those two come back around the same range and I don't get anything ridiculously tight, like a 22 or something, I'm just tossing the thing back together as it is. I'm just going to leave these how they are. I'm not going to mess with it. And if I don't have to mess with this, there's no point in messing with it more if it's already a 20, basically a 26 thou top ring gap and a 28. That's perfectly fine for the amount of boost I'm going to run probably around 12 pounds maybe i don't know we'll see you never know but i mean the fact that those are already that gap saves me a lot of work so i'm gonna get around i'm just gonna check a couple more cylinders probably check number seven i might check number five no we'll call it number five we're checking number five check number five for ring gap and i'll check number eight for ring gap probably you know just check those check the compression rings and as long as those are good Slapping this thing back together like that after we get the cam bearings in. Okay, so... I checked, uh, I think, whatever, cylinder five, whatever. I checked the rings. Uh, they all come back. I'm getting anywhere. Like, the lowest gap I'm getting on these is about 26 thousandths, and then normal, like, 28, 29 on, on them. So... At this point, I'm just going to call it good. That gap is pretty good. It's plenty good for what I'm doing with it. It's got enough of a safety cushion with me for when I tune it. 
that's a big enough ring gap for me to feel comfortable with what I'm doing with it, with the boost I'm going to throw at it. That's perfectly fine as it is. Got the heads all wrapped up tonight. Um, earlier today, got the cam bearings taken out. Got those taken care of. Uh, so right now, I'm kind of at a standstill with that. I can't put anything back in that until I get my bearings. Uh, transmission, waiting on parts for this. Then that can go back together. This thing can get buttoned up 100%. Uh, yeah, so pretty much at a standstill at the moment. There's a couple things I could do. Um, I have to remove a couple exhaust bolts. Where is it? There we are. So I have to remove that guy there. And there's a couple on the other head that I have to remove. So that's kind of like a boring thing that I'm going to have to deal with. So... I don't think I'm really going to bother videoing that. Not really an important thing. It's just weld a nut onto the end. And I got to do that before I switch over to my stainless wire. Because I want to practice with the stainless wire. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to probably pull those out tonight. And then that will be the end of the video tonight. I think this will be the end of part one of actually working on the Ranger project. So LS Ranger... I hope I covered everything I want to. I think I did. I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. Got some stuff done. Talked about some stuff. It's plan. It's probably going to be like a 20 minute video. I don't know. Transmission stuff. Kind of went over that. So this thing should be a, a riot. You know. One two shift. Blow the tires off. Yeah. So. Waiting on the end of the, end of the parts to come rolling in and got to order some stuff on Friday. And then this thing will be pretty much go time. Yep, so we'll pick up next time on the Ranger Project after I get some more parts in. I start working on some stuff again. So thumbs up the video, everybody. This is the first time we're... Moving into some LS stuff on the channel. This is kind of a big thing. I'm the first person to be undertaking this project on the junk channel. So the support helps a lot. You know, everybody watching, giving us the thumbs up, giving us the comments, you know, really helps us out because you guys watching is what's paying for the Blaster Bandit project actually and it's also paying for larry so keep it coming we're going to keep the content coming we got a lot of big things coming even though this year so far has pretty much been shot but we're making the best of it i'm still getting stuff done everybody else is getting stuff done so catch you in the next one